Case number two. A 16 year old has been experiencing joint pain and swelling in multiple joints, including hands, wrists, ankles, and the knees for the past six months. Blood tests reveal a positive rheumatoid factor and elevated inflammatory markers. The joint pain is symmetric and more severe in the morning. Question A, what is the most likely diagnosis? One, systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Two, rheumatoid factor positive polyarthritis. Three, oligoarthritis. Four, zoriatic arthritis. The correct answer is two, polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive. So the presence of systemic arthritis in multiple joints, particularly in small joints of the hands, feet, along with a positive rheumatoid factor, strongly suggests polyarthritis which is rheumatoid factor positive, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. This type resembles adult rheumatoid arthritis and is marked by significant joint involvement and the potential for joint damage if not adequately treated. Question B. What distinguishes polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive from rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis? 1. Lack of uveitis. 2. Asymmetric joint involvement. 3. Presence of rheumatoid factor in blood test for absence of systemic symptoms. The correct answer is three. So the key differentiator between polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive and the negative is the presence of rheumatoid factor in the blood. And this is important because rheumatoid factor positive juvenile idiopathic arthritis tends to have a more aggressive course and a higher risk of joint damage and disability. The rheumatoid factor is an Antibodies that not typically found in healthy children and indicates a more severe form of the arthritis. And this brings us to the question C. What is the significant risk associated with polyarthritis rheumatoid factor positive juvenile idiopathic arthritis? 1. Rapid progression to systemic symptoms. 2. High risk of joint deformities and disability. 3. Immediate onset of uveitis. 4. Quick resolution with non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Of course, the correct answer is 2 joint deformities and long-term disability if not treated aggressively. So early and aggressive treatment including disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs and biologics is crucial in preventing these outcomes.